the Inspector General of Police of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, IGP Ulukayodi, and the Ulu Ebetoko PD of the Nigeria Police Center, Deputy Inspector General of Police and other members of the Force Environment Team, Assistant Inspector General of Police, Commissioners of Police, very senior officers that are here, and of course, the Director General, National Agency for Food and Drug Administration and Control, NAMDAC, Professor Muji Adiyeyi and Entourage. I say good afternoon to you all. I welcome you to the office of the Inspector General of Police, Louis Ellis House for Secretaries, Abuja. The other day we have been posed to the Director of General of NAMDAC today. It's an agency of the federal government has the name implies that controls an administration and control of food and drugs. As we all know that we have some challenges when it comes to issue or the use of fake drug and other treated drugs across this country. I'm sure anyone who cares why the DG is here, and I'm sure definitely is to seek support of the police. We all have with the police so that can operate on the same page to tackle these common enemies we have in this country in this regard. Hey, Jima, once again, you are welcome to the headquarters of the Nigeria Police Force. This is where we supplement over activities of the Nigeria Police Force across the country. We have here to welcome you, the members of the Force Management Team, those who are working the routine and assisting the IGP to make sure we have that police force that is responsible, reliable, effective, and of course, that is people friendly to tackle some of our internal security challenges we have. I have the Deputy Inspector General of Police, and of course, three time force of the Regional Office of the General Police Force, the IG Charge of Training and Development. We are the Frank Mark We have the Deputy Minister of Police in charge of ICT, DIG Daniel Sokari Pedro Enna. We have the Deputy Minister of Police in charge of operations. I'm sure definitely you will be working with him. We are not only working with him as of this moment. I'm sure you're working with the DIG operations, DIG Fidi, and you. We have other AIGs that are here. We have the AIG Ali Harry Mohamed. He's the AIG Training, you know, Policy Policy. Okay, sir. You're welcome, sir. We have the DG because I'm the same people who dress like the next person to him. Green, green, and green. That is the AIG in charge of police on my force and working in the local. Then the Major Buma, the, the member of the force management team, for you to know that the AIGP is gender sensitive. He is a he for she, a he for she indeed. Uh, the first AIGP of the Nigerian police was a woman, and she was standing there, a very beautiful woman. I call her the one, literally, no, the AIG. Then the next is the Blue Berets, those people that always escort the IPs. I'm sure maybe you have one of them or two or three, you know how. I think that I'm waiting for you to meet, to meet him too, after the direct from the IGP, the IG in charge of Special Protection Unit, AIG, FM, okay. We have the IG in charge of DSA, is the, that is the Department of Finance and Administration, and is the one deputizing for DIG. DFA, we have AIG Amani. Is there? <laughs> the next one is, it belongs to many Emirates. It was one time CP Kano. One time CP Kano before it came to Abuja. That is the, the moment thing now. The only issue is Kano stop. It was CP in charge of Kano. And during the, the issue of Emirates crisis, he was promoted to the rank of the AIG and he is here at the headquarters as the AIG in charge of training and development. 
Uh, we have a couple of commissioners of police because of our time. Uh, let me stop at that level. All the CPs, we need to welcome you on behalf of the Inspector General of Police. Ma, you are meeting the Inspector General of Police. Uh, Sean, as a professor, you are a scientist, and you are meeting the one I call the fifth mathematician. It is not a big name for me to call the NGP a mathematician. He actually has a BSc in mathematics. After that, he has a master's in engineering analysis. Later, he has a master's in business administration. And he has PhD in peace and security studies. The FDP has traveled well and near. The FDP has acquired both academic and professional qualifications to make him a very decent and efficient police officer. He has worked on the field. So he has the experience. He was DPO, DCO, uh, officer, operational man to the core as a mobile commander. And of course, commander, rapid response squad in Lagos. And of course, the chief security officer, the then Lagos State. So now who happens to be our president now, President Bola Ahmed Tinobu. He has been a teacher as a, a lecturer at the Commandant Police Training School in Kenya, a teacher as Deputy Commandant Police College in Kenya. He has been area commander in Uzao in San Fara State, area commander in Oshu State. And of course, the uh, IGP has been a command commissioner of police in Kuala State, CP Admin Medical, CP Salicom, and CP. EOT. The NGP uh, was one time the NG in charge of the ceremony in Abuja. Abuja controls federal capital territory and Niger State Command. And part of Kaduna State because of the proximity of Kaduna to Abuja, particularly the Abuja Kaduna Expressway. And when he was promoted to the rank of Deputy Federal Police, he was posted to be the DIG for CIG. You can see that he has got across all the strata of policing structure in Nigeria. And on the 19th of June 2020, 2023, he was appointed as the 22nd Indigenous Inspector General of Police of the Federal Republic of Nigeria by the President, Commander in Chief of the Armed Forces, President Bola Ahmed Tinaku Disefar. And since then, we have been having it while in the police. Is somebody that is highly passionate about the reform agenda of the Nigerian police force. Is someone who is a nationalist. Of course, his wife is from Bauchi State. I always say, I want to challenge many people that nobody can be a nationalist than the Inspector General of Police. He's from Obu State, but he, he got married to his wife of Bauchi in, in State. In Bauchi State. And now uh, it's going to interest you to know that he likes to work with everybody. It relates with you respective of your age, your tribe, your rank, or your religion. He's a very accessible man. And of course, we have been doing all this in the Nigerian police force. He came to the police with a vision statement. To replace a police force that is professionally competent, rule of law compliant, service driven, and people friendly. And of course, you cannot have all this if you are not accessible, if you are not humane, if you are not liberal, and if you are not uh, attractive to people. That is why the message from the IG is that we embrace principles and philosophies of community policy. I am always very happy, and of course today again, I want to introduce him to you, officially, the one I call Cicero of our time, somebody that is a mentor to many of us in this job. And tell me as I officially introduce, at this gathering, the 22nd Indigenous, Inspector General of Police of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, IGP Olukayode at the Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Ma, before I come to the signs of Lambda, there is uh, we, we, we there's a saying that we must ensure that our food supply is safe and that consumers have confidence in the food they eat. Like what DJ has already been saying, I watch you so much on television stations, and I see that you always campaign against consumption of digital and personal commodities. And I drink of food. And I want to assure you that we police, we are trying our best to make sure we arrest some of these people who engage in these dirty and dirty businesses. On that note, I don't know if the head of publication of Nanda is here, or I should help to do the introduction on the site of 
as you go up here, and you're, you're very well. <laughs> here, you're so happy. The other thing we have here, the DJ of Lambda, our home mama, I'm very sure she has been uh, on her seat for many years now, if I'm not making a mistake. And we can see that women, in most cases, in fact, in Nigerian history, concerning our fight against all these advocated products and bad food. We have women of virtue who have done well, and we cannot forget them in the history of this country. And Naratu has joined the League of Those who are doing well to tackle some of these collective problems we have. I want to welcome her again, Professor Muji Adeyayi. Did you? The other thing we have here, Mr. Binga, I know one day, Director of Finance and Account of NABDA. It's good to be his friend. I always want to be your friend. <laughs> we have the Deputy Director of Human Resources, Mr. Oboli Augustine. We have the Special Assistant to the DJ, Namka. We have Mr. Daddy Nantin Mola, FSI. Then the PM to the DJ, Mr. Noladi Onolapo. Another woman on the entourage, Mrs. Olaju Moke Aguda, the public affairs. Thank you. On that note, I want to hand over the mic to the DG of that to please tell us why they are here and possibly the templates for our discussion today. Thank you, the DG. Thank you, Mr. Thank you very much uh, for the introduction. Uh, I want to thank the IG of police from Nigeria, uh, Dr. Ebetoku. I want to thank all of you for being here. Uh, this is a very, it's an August visitor, in August visit rather, in uh, Judah. And uh, I was sharing with the IGP that NAVDAC is a unique organization that cannot function without the police. That is a fact. Uh, why is that so? Because we deal with some clients that do not want to be the group. Some clients that do not give regard to life. Some clients that do everything based on greed, irrespective of who dies in the process. Uh, NAVDAC's mandate is to regulate and control the manufacturing Aside from importation and exportation, the manufacturing, the distribution, the advertisement, the sale and use of several regulated products, medicines, foods, medical devices, and medicines include vaccines. Medical devices, packing water, chemicals, ceramic, uh, excuse me, cosmetics, Detergents. So we have several regulated products. That is why our work is a very tedious one. That is why without police helping us, assisting us, we cannot. There is no way that we can do what we are doing. You know. uh, the Federal Tax Force is doing side in NAVDAC. The Federal Task Force was created by the Act C-34 and the goal is to mitigate substandard falsified medicines and unwholesome food. The chairperson of the Federal Task Force is also the head of investigation and enforcement directorate in NAMDA. So the headquarters of the Federal Task Force is in Lagos. We have state tax forces in all these, or we're supposed to actually, in all the states, but 
Unfortunately, those days that tax forces have not been functioning very well, and that is part of why I'm here. Because the state tax forces are supposed to be composed in each state, the director of pharmaceutical services, the police, the army, the customs, in order to ensure that whatever we are getting, we are giving our people at the state level is of quality and is not going to kill them in terms of our regulated programs. We need the police to assist us at the state levels. Because of the economic situation we are in, some people do not care what they sell, whether it's food or medicines. So there has been some, I would call it spurious circulation of some foods. And an example is what we did in Aba in December. Counterfeiting of wines and beverages. Revalidation of expiration dating. So if expiration dating is Monday, December 1 or whatever, they can change it to December 1, 2023, they can change it to 2025. So people will be drink thinking that they are using validated foods, but not. And then they will get ill. Some of the things that are going on now that we have discovered is putting zero medicine, no medicine in what some of the medicines that are being sold. We have a case in Kano where there is zero medicine in children's antibiotics and antimalarials. They are in jail right now. Well, they, they were in jail for two months or so. I think they sent a bail for them. But the police was, were part and parcel of how we got to where we are in Kano. Because we disrupted the open markets where they sell drugs openly, like we want to sell Gary. So we move them through the help of the police and other forces to what we call the drug mob. We call it coordinated wholesale center in Kanawa, Kano. But our work is just starting there because we move them from where they are with everything to the new place. Now we have to monitor them like a hawk. We need police. So I cannot overemphasize the importance of the forces in terms of our daily living. Whether it is water, whether it is food, whether it is medicine or whatever, without the police watching our backs, we will not be able to. So I want to thank the ID. I want to thank all the uh, forces that are here today for Joining hands with us, I assume that the hands are already joined. You know, joining hands with us to ensure that we don't die early deaths. Our people don't die early deaths. Many people have died early deaths in Nigeria, based on food, medicine, water, or whatever regulated products that are counterfeited. That is why we're here, and I want to thank the IG for granting uh, this courtesy visit within the short time notice. Uh, thank you so much, sir. And uh, I wish all of us the best. God, God bless Nigeria. Thank you. Council of Chiefs, the DG once again. The decent quality control is not just a process, it's a promise to protect public 
A long time senator in the U.S. says quality food and drugs are the building blocks of a strong and vibrant community. And that's why we are meeting today, so that we can have that building blocks, or those building blocks that we're going to use to build a strong and vibrant community in Nigeria. Thank you. DG, I want to honor those respectfully call on the Inspector General of Police of the Federal Republic of Nigeria to please address this local country and respond to the issues raised by the DG. Yes, you please. Thank you. <coughs> the Director General, These roles are very vital to the survival of our country. We know that in discharging your duties, you require collaboration with the Nigerian Police Force. And I want to assure you of our continued commitment to supporting the organization. We will continue to work closely with you to ensure that you execute your mandate successfully and to ensure the protection of our citizens. We have a mandate in our hands that we must all work together to combat. More people are dying of free drugs and consumption of bad food more than they are dying of bandit attacks in Nigeria. This is a serious concern to all of us and I want to assure you, the DG, that we are committed to increasing the support that we are giving you. Anytime you need our help in any of the states in Nigeria, our commissioners of police will be instructed to give you maximum support. Um, the Deputy Inspector General of Police in charge of operation is here, and immediately after this meeting, is going to follow up with the commissioners in the states that in all the places you want to carry out your operation, the police will give you maximum support. So I thank you for coming. I thank you for coming and I look forward to continuing collaboration with your organization. Thank you. I want to appreciate the idea once again. That's is the message from the Spirit of Police 
And I know whoever comes across the LAP must smile. And you can see the throne, the PJ is smiling seriously because she has got what actually she, she wants from the police. The support is very key, and that's what the LAP has promised them. And I know you want to exchange uh, Somalia, the LAP has something to present to the DG as a traditional force headquarters. This is the woman to the left of the IG, please. The woman to the left of the IG. Please don't put any woman on the street. <laughs> <laughs> 